What's up, everybody? My name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition, and you're tuned into Kind of Neat. We're back. We took a month off. I had a fucking crazy month of March. I had like a 10 day road trip and then a trip to Australia. So I was like really busy and I just didn't have time to do this. So I apologize. I I appreciate all you guys hitting me up saying that it's become a part of your week and that you were missing it and all that stuff. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate that so much, but uh, we're back. Here we are. And I'm really happy. We've got some great guests lined up. First things first intuition you can follow me on twitter at it's intuition follow my man ben shim behind the boards making the shit sound buttery at i am database base with two s's you follow us on a, as a unit on at kind of neat please follow us on twitter i i would appreciate it our youtube is growing so fast and our facebook is growing so fast and the twitter is just kind of sitting there i really want to get to that thousand mark so just follow it i won't blow your tweets up you'll just know when the episodes come out and you'll be happy to know about that so follow us on twitter Facebook.com slash kind of neat, YouTube.com slash that's kind of neat, where you're going to see our man, Anderson Pack, formerly known as Breezy Lovejoy, perform a banger called Suede. Like this guy, one take jaked it, aced it. I was very happy while we were filming this. It's a really good song and I like it a lot. Also, download the uh, podcast app on your iPhone or download Stitcher or whatever. Like, Find some means to download and listen to podcasts on your phone and subscribe to us. Leave a five-star rating on iTunes. Comment on it. Tell us who you want to see on the show. I would appreciate that. The more follows and comments and subscribers that we get and ratings... The closer we are to getting on the front page of iTunes and when we get to the front page of iTunes, that's when the whole shit is going to go ape shit, bananas, crazy. So please do that. Like I said, today on the show, we have my man, Anderson Pack. Really get great conversation. I was very happy about it and he fucking murdered the show or mur- murdered the, uh, the performance and uh, – yeah, it was a good conversation. I was very surprised by his upbringing. I didn't know a lot of this stuff, even though I've known him for quite a few years now and worked with him pretty closely uh, You know, on the, at the last place I was at. With that being said, we're going to get into this podcast with my man Anderson Pack. I thought this is a really interesting interview. He's got like um, some tumultuous family shit that went on that I didn't know about. That's very interesting that we go into quickly. And, um, you know, Anderson, I keep wanting to call him breezy because that's how I've been knowing him. I feel like his stock is rising in L.A. Every everybody seems to be like kind of picking up on um, how talented he is because he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's a singer. He's a rapper. He can do it all. Very charming, big smile. He's a handsome dude and chicks dig it. And so, you know, when girls dig it, it eventually it's going to work. So um, without further ado, let's get right into the uh, interview with my man Anderson Pack. I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, what you been doing besides push-ups? Fuck, man. I'm gl- man you know this? That's what's up, bro. <laughs> Trying to get right, bro. Shit. I'll say it. Me too. Yeah, man. I feel you. I mean, shit. Being a dad, you know, being a husband... Being a fucking, you know, wild animal, you know, Mm -hmm. when I'm not working in the studio. I've been a studio rat, honestly. Yeah, you just got done with curating the Watsky thing or whatever? Yeah, He was one of our last guests, so he was, before we took our month off, he was one of our last guests, and he was very excited, like, oh, we're going into the studio for two weeks, Mm -hmm. and Breezy's gonna, like, executive produce or whatever you would call it, I don't know, Quincy Jones in? Yeah, pretty much. That's what it was. How did that go? What was the process like? It was pretty incredible, man. Um, Watsky is one of those dudes that has real strong vision about what he wants to do. Yeah. So... When you have someone like that, it makes a lot of the work, you know, a lot of it's it's less strenuous for for me to come in because all I have to do is kind of meet him halfway. And, he probably came in very prepared. Yeah, I mean, w- how it was was we we went in and we did these jam sessions that I was just conducting, and we used his, a lot of his musicians that he tours with, a lot of my musicians that I that I work with, and we developed like thirty sketches. And he wrote to all of them. So he had like 32 songs before we even went into for so the real sessions. So you guys had the jam sessions already beforehand. Yep. When did you do those? We did them like a few months prior to the two-week process of recording the actual album. And what was that? Like you, you're just sitting on the drums and, yep. and then somebody starts playing a guitar riff. And then yeah, the, and straight then, up. And then the bass comes in and whatever. Yeah, we, he has this garage and he's got all this equipment in there. And, and um, yeah, I'm on the drums and we usually had two other musicians. So... A bass player, a guitar player, or a guitar and keys, or however, we just switch it off like that. Mm-hmm. And we jam, and we just jam, and then we find some cool shit, and we're like, oh, let's rock with this, you know? And then we we, we build A sections, B sections from there. Mm-hmm. We um, He has the homie Nils, that is like his main man, recording everything, and his tour manager and everything, so... 
he's recording everything and, and we get these sketches down. Sometimes he has the songs written before we even finish the actual sketches. And, and sometimes he's got like the song and the video treatment. Like he's just one of those cats. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a very visual guy. Yeah, dude. It he's, works. Yeah, it, man. It works. It's yeah. very inspiring to be around to see him invest in, in himself like that. It's, Absolutely. it's crazy. That's the thing is like the buzz around Los Angeles is that like, Bre- well, Anderson Pack now. Mm-hmm. Is it Anderson Pack yeah, or Pack? Absolutely. Pa- Anderson. I, 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 I almost Anderson. said Breezy because I've known you so long. No, as I Breezy. Good, fam. Yeah. But, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh man. Breezy's like the most well-rounded musician and just as we sit here and talk like you're you, you just talk about drumming and yeah. executive producing and you sing and you rap and when did this start where did it come from right right I mean man it's, I think it's been like that for a minute I started on drums so I at st- what age I started at 12 oh really yeah. Yeah, yeah I started around 6th grade like 12 or 11 or 12 and um you know, I started playing drums in, in band, and then I quit band because I didn't want to learn how to read music. It was just too much, you know. Was discipline. it just like on, on a snare? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with snare and bass drum um, and vibes and stuff. Uh-huh. And then um, a couple weeks after I started band, my step pops bought a drum kit. Uh-huh. And then I was coming home from school, and he was just messing around on the drum kit. I didn't even know he played. And then uh, he just let me hop on it, and it was one of the – Drums is like one of the most natural things like that came to me. Like uh-huh. I don't know anything else that was is that natural. So that's why when people are like, "How do you play and sing and, and this and that?" It's like I don't even think about it. Like when I drum, it's like it's just an. It's I've never picked up on something that fast. So yeah, it was like only a, a matter of days before I was playing a beat and I was playing along to songs and stuff like that. Did you take lessons? No, no formal lessons until a little later. I, I went to MI. You know what's great is I, I like I can feel that when you're playing yeah. because I'm all, I always tell people like oh you know like can you play more like breezy you know? like because you got these certain chops where it's like it, it's so precise but you can tell that it's untrained yeah like, like yeah. you like you don't like ride the cymbals too much right. it's just kind of very like stop and go yeah straight up yeah you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, like yeah, absolutely I, I don't know I, I really like your chops i've always respected that so. no i appreciate yeah, it man. yeah i'm the sh- i'm the shit bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah no nah, but you know i think a lot of that was from like playing in church and like a lot of church playing is like following you know the leader and like being ready to play you know different stuff on the drop of a hat i was just gonna say you had after you found out you could play the drums i'm sure you came up playing in church yeah that was it you know because there's soul in there yeah soul and there's you know there's so many different genres and like it's all based around energy you know like so you just you're just vibing off of you know people singing and then you got to play fast when it's time to play fast and slow down and watch your tempo so that and then you know that developed into me getting into jazz and then when i got into like jay dilla and stuff then i got swingy swingy and like trying to mim- mimic you know hip-hop beats and doing yeah. stuff like chris dave so that became like that's where i'm at now i'm like really into the groove and like you know playing you know having my own style on the kit and and being like you said having this raw feel and, and it's not so predictable because it's a fine line like drums can make or break a track all always Straight you up. know what i mean like yeah. if you have a, a demo with shitty drums it never becomes a good song but Absolutely. like you know that's the whole thing is that uh the way that you play when you play hip hop, it never sounds loungy. Like I feel like some hip hop bands, they start playing and it sounds like lounge music. Yep, you know what I mean? Yep. Or it gets too jazzy and it's just jazz with a fucking rap vocalist. Absolutely. Your shit sounds like rap drums. Man. Yeah. That's so up, man. anyways, blah, blah, that's, blah. You know, that's what I'm going for when it comes to the drums. Drums is, is very important to me. So. Yeah. Did you pick up other instruments too? Um, I play little keys and, and um, that's pretty much it, man. Like I can do a little keys when I produce, I, I play, you know, usually you know, start off on keys and stuff like that. But drums is pretty much the main yeah. thing that I got going. And yeah, yeah. Where were you born at? I was born in uh, Oxnard, California. Oh yeah, Oxnard. That's right. We yeah. have the Central Coast in common. Straight up. Yeah. What was uh What was Oxnard like as a kid? Oxnard was was boring as fuck. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was cool. Like. I was born in Oxnard, and then I grew up in Ventura County. Yeah, we ha- you're the second rapper from Ventura we've had on. Was the homie Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. He was um he's he's a little younger, so but he he can uh he can agree that it's it you know there's Oxnard and there's Ventura. Ventura is the suburbs, yeah. very much so. So you have a lot of white kids, and you have a lot of Latino kids as well. Oxnard is mainly Latinos, and it's based around farming mm-hmm. and uh, produce. So yeah. that's like the main thing that goes around in Oxnard. But I grew up in Ventura. And it was, um, I had a lot of fun. I went to a real small high school. It was like a magnet school. It was like 300 kids tops. Yeah. And uh, I got hip to like a lot of different stuff that I probably wouldn't be hip to if I grew up in a bigger city. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I was, you know, one of the only black kids. So, you know, I, I, I was like that cool black kid pretty much like yeah, in high school. So yeah. it was like all everything kind of came through me and stuff. So, I you know, I had that going. And, you know, th- it was just like different musics that I was exposed to and stuff. A lot of rock and, and, and punk rock. There's a punk rock scene out there and stuff. And, yeah, it was cool. I was ready to get out, though. By the time I was like 17, 18, I was ready to come out here. Yeah. yeah. You know, my grandmother's from Ohio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I used to, so the first places that I used to visit in California when I would come down is like 10, 11 was like, off the 33 Ventura yeah off yep. the 33 Ventura mm-hmm. Oxnard mm-hmm. and and through my teenage years you know I had an older uh, cousin that I would come hang out with um, down here and I always kind of thought like yeah Ventura is where all the white people are and then Oxnard is where all the like lowrider clubs are and straight shit. up straight you know up. what I mean yeah and yeah. Uh, Ventura seemed to have like hella skinheads and shit yeah, absolutely you, man you know I mean? punk, rock, by punk, punk rock scene and everything absolutely man yeah yeah, yeah it was um it was interesting, man. You know, there was places you couldn't go. Like, I don't know if it's like that anymore, but there was definitely places you couldn't go downtown Ventura that it was like a lot of skinheads, you mm-hmm. know, and, and that was a thing. Um, it, like out here, they have, you know, Bloods and Crips and, and different things like that. But out there, it was like, you know, white supremacists, you know. Yeah, was, white was, supremacists. It was a real and then, thing. And then Cholos and shit. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So, but it was cool. I got to see both sides. You know, my first girlfriend was, was Mexican and, and, you know, her pops had the Lowrider Club uh-huh. and all that stuff. So um, I was DJing in high school. So I used to DJ for all their kickbacks and like, it was cool, man. They, yeah. they, they, they treated me well. You're half black, half Korean though? I'm a quarter Korean. Quarter Korean? Yeah, yeah. So wait, what's the ethnic breakdown? What's your mom? Uh, my mom is half black, half Korean. Okay. Um, She was born in Seoul during the 50s. Oh, no during, shit. Yeah. So during the Korean War. So I never knew my par- like my grandparents. You know, she was adopted. My adopted grandmother is was in the military, and she was one of like the first, you know, lieutenant female, you know, high ranking females in the military. Really. So she was traveling all over the place, and she adopted my mom and my uncle, and they came out and moved to Compton in the fifties. No shit. So mm-hmm. your mom and uncle were both adopted, but they're they're like blood relations. Yep. Yeah. No, okay. Mm-hmm. So there was this dude finding because back then, if there were mixed breed kids in Korea, they were going around. You How know, does that work? Like she was born to just like a soldier came over. That's that's what pretty much is yeah. the story we seem because um. The adoption papers don't get into that. Yeah. And, um, so they, she was pretty much found. Her and my my uncle were found next to like a, a garbage can. Whoa, pretty much. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. So so um she was abandoned. You know she was probably like seven or eight years old. So somebody took care of her up until a certain age, and then they were just like fuck it. No know? shit. Yeah. And so how old, is her brother older or younger? Younger. No younger. shit. Yeah. So her and her younger brother are found next to a fucking garbage Straight can. Straight up, man. So who adopted them? So there was a dude. I can't think of his name right now, but he was going around. He was getting all of these mixed breed kids, all the kids that were being abandoned at yeah. the time. He yeah. was, you know, getting them and getting them to the orphanages. Yeah. So um, I can't think. I, I got to ask moms what the dude's name is. Yeah, but um, he, he came through and, and got him to the orphanage. And then my grandma was, you know, in the military. Swooped them up and they moved to to the uh, to Compton in the fifties, where yeah. it's just like you know f- pretty much farmland at that point. Really, yeah, that's what my mom says. Just like just chickens and you know nothing. Yeah, so she grows up in Compton, but long before yeah. like uh, NWA, NWA yeah. and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She, she she wasn't running with Easy E. Nah, nah, not yeah. yet, dude. It was yeah. just you know chicken coops and just you know she said they didn't even have the water system out there yet. It was yeah. just all you know, and then eventually it was the suburbs, and then you know you know the jobs and this and that happened and then yeah. you know, it is what it is but she grew up in LA up until uh she went to high school yeah. and then, then they moved to Oxnard so she got adopted by a black family or a white family yeah or? black family okay cool yep, yep. and so then um so they move up to Oxnard and mm-hmm. what does she end up doing with her what does she end up doing with like her life before you yeah so she um she went to school and then uh from what she tells me you know she got into college but she she was she you know college she college isn't college. for some people yeah it wasn't for her and what she really loved to do was draw she was a good artist mm. um so she was going to school for drawing and stuff and then eventually that didn't work out and she didn't want to work anywhere and and the um, one of her homies had a produce company because you know Oxnard is big on strawberries yeah, yeah he had a produce stand a strawberry stand that he was pretty much gonna leave and he was like you want to take this over she took it over and um. That was pretty much what she ended up doing up until she had us. By the time she had me and my little sister, she had she was the biggest produce, you know, strawberry um, grower in Oxnard. At no the, shit. At the point. Yeah. So she started owning Privately. some owning some farms. Uh huh. Oh, yep. She sick. had fields and all that. So she had it cracking. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of shit happened up until I was in high school. But pretty much what happened is um, she had the strawberry fields and she had investors. She couldn't pay investors back and. Um, Pretty much what happened is she had to file bankruptcy, uh, yeah. lost the fields, and um, 
around the time this happened, she had to, she wasn't notifying the government about how much money she was making this and that. Uh-huh. So the DA did a case against her. She didn't know. And, uh, like one thing led to another and, and, uh, she ended up catching the case, her uh-huh. and my step pops. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. This is around the time I was in like senior year of high school. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. What did it have to do with like illegal workers? Or yeah. Something like that? Uh, no, it was, um, illegally moving securities. So they filed bankruptcy and what wasn't notifying the government. So they were, they were going and, and, uh, Pretty much, they weren't filing taxes. They were, they were gambling this mm-hmm. and that. And so, the, uh, this there was this dude that w- that was going around doing petitions and stuff like she's making this money and not notifying. You know, she's not paying people back. And so, um, he pretty much set up a case. And then DA set up a case like two years. And they really didn't have much. But then after two years, they had enough. And and they, uh, my mom was arrested. Um, this was in December around the time I was pretty much. This is around '04. So I was I was pretty much uh, just starting um, my um, in the middle of my senior year yeah. when this happened. So, no shit. Yeah. So she ended up doing seven and a half years, man. Get the fuck out. Straight up. Really? Straight up. So she just got out. She got out. Yeah, f- a couple years ago. No yeah, shit. Th- about three years ago. Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. So stepdad had to go too. Or yep. No? Stepdad had to go too. No shit. Yeah. That's yep. crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. But, um, it was a trip, man. So. Yeah. Wait. So you keep saying stepdad. Do you, do you know your real dad? I did. I knew my real dad. He around the time I was seven, he ended, he got locked up too. He no got shit. It heavy into cocaine and, and oh. dr- drugs and stuff. Wow. He ended up getting locked up. And um, how'd your folks meet? Your uh, your biological folks? my my mom and my pops met at a club, and my pops was a uh, uh, worked on uh, jets. Okay. So he was in the in the air force. Okay. But he got discharged because of weed. So no he shit. couldn't. He, he got discharged, and, and around the time he was getting discharged, he met my mom. He was stationed in Southern California. He though? was in. Uh, yeah, he was in Wyoming, Port Wyoming. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he met my mom's, and um, they met around that time. So, um, from what my mom says, you know, he was just he was dope with, with mechanics. You know, yeah, that was yeah. his thing. And when he lost that, he kind of just. You know, took a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the drugs were there. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, man. that sucks. So she on drugs. and so uh, he produced you and you, yeah, you my said little, little sister. sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh, and then he got he gets locked up. And how does that feel as a um, seven year old? Do, do you do you comprehend that? Yeah, it was actually it was pretty crazy how situation how it happened. Man, he got heavy into the into the drugs, mm-hmm. and um, he started um, you know, he started blaming people for what was going on around him and he couldn't really, he couldn't really handle it. So mm-hmm. what ended up happening is, uh, he, he ended up beating my mom really bad. Ugh. Yeah. So we, we actually seen, seen it, you know, yeah. I was seven years old and we come outside to screaming and my mom's is in, in a puddle of blood. Oh shit. Yeah. And, and, and we're just like, Oh shit. I'm seven years old. My sister is like, you know, five and, um, we run in the house and, you know, we, we call the cops, this and that. And that was the last time I seen him. He, he got oh. locked up for like 14 years after that. After that. So yeah. he, is he still in there? No, no. he's He was out and I got to talk to him a couple of years before he passed away, but he passed. I'm sorry to hear that. Man, you got a fucking colorful story already. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, when did he get out? How old were you? I was... I mean, I think he got out. I was probably like around twenty, twenty one, or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm twenty eight years old now. Yeah, so, so a while ago. Yeah, he got out. How did he? How did he pass? He passed from uh, I think it was colon cancer. Oh no yeah, shit. Yeah, he was a heavy drinker and stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it was a trip, man. Like the, the around the, the before he passed, we talked a lot, and I was actually on tour around the time really close when he when he passed and he was um he was you know the cancer was getting really bad and he was he wanted me to you know talk to him and he was trying to he wanted to tell his story to me you know because he was into i didn't know this but he wasn't really into singing as well and he was into him and my uncles had a group and you know he really was like you know i'm proud of you man yeah like that shit is kind of in your genes and you didn't even know it yeah exactly you know so you tell me about my uncle that actually also played drums and Played for you know Tina Marie and all these different people. Oh so no shit! It was crazy, and uh, you know he was uh, he would leave messages singing and stuff, and yeah. I think he knew it was his time. And you know I got to make peace with him though. You know yeah. I didn't get to really see him until we 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 buried him, but you know we got to make amends and you know. So he died young. Yeah, I mean he was you know I don't you know barely in his sixties. Oh he's oh he was in his sixties. Yeah then? yeah. How does that make you feel about mortality? Because my dad's sick right now. You yeah know? and. Uh, it just makes me worried because knowing that my father has Alzheimer's, like every time I like can't think of a word or forget something, I'm like, oh fuck! Like I'm like it may, really yeah. makes me think about my mortality and the time that I have left. Absolutely. Like, was that a, an eye opener? for It you? was definitely, bro. And um, I think I found out about his health 
bef- while he was still in prison. So while the time, I used to be really, really big, like in high school. I was fucking like, I was huge, man. Like I was like 250, 260 and shorter. Really? Yeah. No shit. I was, I was shorter than I am now. And it was, I was just, that was all I was, you know, that's the, anybody that went to high school with me, they know me as Bubba, you know, chubby kid. Really? You know, so I was. I would have never guessed. Yeah. I always known you as a skinny dude. Yeah, man. So I was a heavy dude. So when I found out about his health, like immediately, like right after, you know, the stuff started going down with my parents. That's I just, when you started getting them push-ups in. Yeah, I started getting push-ups <laughs> to health, you know, I was anything I could. I wasn't like, I didn't know anything about, you know, the meat situation and about it being, you know, and now, now I'm, I'm more developed in it, but I was more so just trying to cut out anything yeah. that, that, you know, could maybe. Weren't you a cigarette smoker? I was a heavy weed smoker and, and it developed into like spliffs. So I was uh, smoking spliffs heavy at one yeah, point. Yeah. So I don't smoke anymore. And, you quit smoking weed? Yeah. Oh shit, yeah, man. man. How's that? It's it's good, man. It's yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, I'm married and I live with my wife and my yeah. kids. So everybody knows, you know, like, I mean, unless your, your chick is a smoker too, it's hard to keep that up yeah, you know, yeah. and, and still be you know, productive, you know, around your kids. And it just becomes un- unfun because you, you smoke. And then if your wife's not into it, it's like, you do, it's like, it, what's it's, the point? It's something to bicker over. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, but. Oh, with your old high ass exactly, again. Yeah. Exactly, man. But at the same time, man, I really like with the, with the past two years, I just felt like I wanted to really work and I didn't feel like I deserved to smoke or, yeah. or party and or yeah. none of that shit because I felt like I was behind, you know? So I, I like that. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be a time to smoke and shit, but it's time to work right now. Something that a lot of people don't talk about when they quit weed. Like I used to be a heavy smoker and a lot of people don't know that. Cause like I don't smoke at all. Like yeah. you've always known me as to not be a smoker. Absolutely. And so like, that's the thing is when I was younger, I was a heavy smoker. And then I realized like, Oh, this is becoming like a really bad expensive habit. And so I was like, I got to quit Yeah, because I was buying like an eighth to myself every other day. And like, that's way more expensive than smoking cigarettes. Absolutely. And so I was spending like thousands of dollars a month uh, that I didn't have. And uh, when I quit though, Obviously, it's not a physical addiction to weed. Mm. Like, that doesn't exist. But right. I got really depressed for, like, four or five months afterwards. Right. Like, I didn't, I wasn't in the right headspace. Did you go through any um, of that? Yeah, I think, like, the thing is, what makes it hard for me is that so many people in my circle smoke. Smokes, and, though. And I think there's no addiction to weed. But what I think that there, the thing is with weed is that you become... It, it's the it's the ritual, you know. It's yeah. like rolling up. It's the whole communion with with smoking with your peers yeah. and that whole thing. That becomes a thing that you. But I it is a long it is for. a form of self medication too. It is, like it if is. you like being high, you're trying to fix something within yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But something. Thing, the also thing I noticed is that like if you if it becomes a thing that you're doing a lot every day and in the morning and the night and all these different things, it's like after a while you're in this constant state always. So it I felt to, like I wasn't. I mean, yeah, I didn't know what it was you, like to get high you, no more. And you start to feel weird when you're sober exactly you know what i mean exactly. that's that's the point when i when i when it got to that point where i was like i was sober and i'm like yeah this feels really fucking weird like i don't know if i should drive right now yeah. like that's what i was like uh, wait <laughs> you know like so, something's wrong you know yeah exactly yeah. so um and now you know i'll hit the weed once or something after yeah. you know it's been months uh since i haven't smoked yeah. um i just probably, get paranoid now yeah so it, yeah exactly so in the weed's so strong so it's like if i just smoke a little like i get back to when i was in high school when i was really when i really yeah get high and oh, all just sure. everything's funny and just like you know yeah that anxiety is there so it's like yeah i feel like i just act like a kook when i'm yeah on, when i smoke weed now i'm like man everyone can tell how fucking goofy and stoned yeah, i am yeah right now. but you're affected now <laughs> yeah, as opposed yeah. to before you just yeah. whatever it's just i'm always in this cloud so yeah. that's where i was at and, yeah yeah but yeah to get back to what the when my pops in the health yeah that was totally you know a big part of where i'm at now i'm i'm, I'm a, a large part of you know what i do now is is just as important to me as the artistry because i feel like it's a big part of that headspace when i'm healthy i I can you know get out my ideas better and, and my music is better and people um you know respect it and yeah. we're in la you know and it's like that's, that's such a big part of, of it you know that hurdle i don't want to have to deal with that hurdle pat cat shutting me down just because of the aesthetic right you know what i'm saying because i have a lot to show you know what i'm saying and, and uh that part wasn't important to me at yeah. all. So that's just where I'm at in the stage of my artistry. You know, I'm just like, cool, what else can I develop? You know, I want to get better as a writer. I want I want my fucking, you know, my aesthetic to be tight yeah. too. You know, yeah. just- I like that. Before dad even goes away, like... Was it on some like, were you a little kid recognizing like, oh, my dad's kind of changing? Like, was, was, was it on some like foul shit? Were, were your grandparents like, oh, fuck that fool. He's, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, man, honestly, the only thing I knew was that like we weren't seeing him a lot, you yeah. know? And he was, um, I mean, I was seven when he went in. So like all the, the memories I have is like, he was really dope. Like as far as, um, putting in time and like making sure we have fun and mm-hmm. i remember he was always playing with us and stuff and then i remember there were instances where 
you know, he would be gone for a few days and then we would see him, you know, we, my mom would be picking him up from different places and mm. there was, there was space, but my mom, no one around me was ever like, you know, fuck that fool. Yeah, even, yeah. even like, and this is why I respect my mom a lot. Like to this day is like, even after, you know, you know, she was at, you know, came out of the hospital after he beat her and all this stuff. She never down, you know, dogged him or, or said bad things about him. She was only the, the main thing she always said was, you know, he was an excellent father. It was just the drugs, you know, got yeah. to him and, and changed him. Yeah. And, uh, and she always kept a positive, you know, outlook about everything. And she never painted any crazy picture about him. You right, know, I right. had a lot of resentment towards him growing up just because I see Absolutely. what happened. But, um. That was the reason why when I got older and started comp, um, talking with him and stuff, I was able to, you know, let that shit go and just kind of, and now, I'm, you know, I'm a man and I understand, you know, how it is now, you know, and, and how, you know, life can, you know, drive you to certain, you know, directions. And, right. You know, so it's, uh, I'm at peace with it. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much how that went down. Yeah. How long was it until she met your stepdad? It was pretty soon after. I think it was like a couple of years after, um, she met my step pops and, uh, and you know he he came along with his own vices, so it was like she was just like had the worst batting average. When really? It came to, to did, did you guys click though? Um, we did, and uh, I mean I was like eight or nine years old, and and he, he was a younger. Uh, he was younger. He was like in his like late thirties. I thought you were. He was, he was like twelve. Yeah, he was <laughs> about fifteen. So you know it was a little weird. But you no. know I, I, I was in fourth grade. He was a seventh. <laughs> no, I was a- <laughs> fucked up um, <laughs> so he was a little younger than your mom yeah he was a little younger than my mom's and um he was uh man he was real cool man yeah. when, when we when we first got it came into play because he was like one of those those like older dudes that was up on shit uh, so yeah. he was like this is around the time snoop and dre is popping and yep. he would pick me up in the bronco and be bumping like all the latest shit and you know and, hell like, yeah my dad used to have a bronco as yep, well a green yeah. bronco yeah. dude with the system in it and um i was you know just my pops that went in and i was you know totally like Oh, you know, can you be my pops? Yeah. Just, you know, like, so on that level. So when he came into play, I was all about it, you know. Yeah. But, um, and so he's putting you on to rap music and he, shit? Yeah, you know, I was I was really into a lot of hip-hop stuff, but he was, you know, he was putting me on to, you know, a lot of different stuff. You know, he was into Tony, Tony, Tony. and like, Yeah, he's like, oh, have you heard this song, yeah, Bitches Ain't Shit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we would be just, like, going ham. And, and uh, so, you know, on the way to school and stuff, and I would get in trouble, and he would be the cool dad and be like, it's cool, man. And my moms would be, you know, be yeah. pissed but he would be you know on that tip so he was cool man but it, you know eventually like you know he had his own vices too you know he had his his things that that caught up to him too and a lot of stuff came to light when when my parents got in trouble by the time i got to high school i had a real you know i, I wasn't feeling my step pops you know yeah, I, yeah. I kind of started noticing things that were going on and um you know the thing i will say though i have a lot of respect still for him because that was a real um vulnerable spot in my life where like a lot of kids at that age, they didn't have any kind of male influence. Uh-huh. So my pops had just went in and I was like eight or nine years old and my step pops came in. And he really stepped up to the plate. He stepped up to the plate and he was around, you know, and like he was there and, and um, he was, you know, he had his own. He was a crazy dude at the same time. But I remember, you know. I got to, he was around up until I was in high school and I got to have conversations with him. And I remember, you know, him talking about different stuff that still kind of sticks with me, you know, and, um, you know, just, just different stuff that I carry on with as, you know, growing up to being a man and now I have my own son. So, um, did they end up having any, any kids together afterwards? No, no no kids. No. Um, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he ended up doing time and, you know, and, he did his time and, and uh we we actually don't did they come out and get back together no no, no my mom's wanted a, a divorce pretty yeah. much while they were in there because a lot of they were pretty much on the way out when stuff was hitting oh, they were on the way out on the way in yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so a lot of stuff started coming into play like you know started coming to light by the time he, he had you know had other kids and stuff like that it's and a wild story man. it's crazy man yeah, so it's wild yeah but you took to school i would imagine because you said you were in the magnet program so you, you're a pretty smart guy I mean, I, I was in a lottery, so I got into that school because it was like, yeah, it was like the first year. It was just just starting. Yeah. The high school was brand new. Uh-huh. So I got put in a lottery. Yeah. They came to my middle school. And they were like, you want to be a part of this school? We don't have any sports or anything like that. And no music, you know, classes or anything, but it's all computers. Yeah. And you can, we fuck with green screens and shit like yeah, that. So yeah. this is early 2000s. So I was like, all right, tight. You yeah. Know, like, I just, you know, signed up They're for They're like, it. we don't got any music program, but how do you feel about where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Exactly. 
You ever heard of PowerPoint? <laughs> yeah. All right, you gonna learn that shit. Yeah. So that was the shit. You know, what'd like, you do before? What did you? What were you into as a little little kid uh, be- before music came along? Before music? Yeah. Damn. Did you play any sports? No, no, dude. Because you said you were a little, you were a little chubby guy. Yeah. I mean, dude. I honestly, I don't remember his shit until until I saw the movie Juice, and then that's when that's like when my memory starts. I feel like, yeah. like I saw the movie Juice, and then. Like you got the juice that's now. That's all man. I wanted to do, dude. Yeah, that's what because you saw the DJs. Yeah, I saw the DJs. Yeah. You know, them rapping. Very, infa- very. If you get, if you young younger listeners listening haven't seen Juice, there's some very infamous DJ scenes and yeah. Qu- Queen Latifah is one of the judges, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The yeah. party scenes and them yeah. just going around the city. And Tup- Tupac's first movie. Yeah, he yeah. was really good in it. Very good. Yeah, very, very convincing, good. psychotic man. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the part when they're in the elevator and they always use that shit now when they're <laughs> yeah. face to face or whatever. But so, so th- what it was is that you were actually the fat friend, but wanted to be Q. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, was I knew you. I was Q, you know, but I was definitely not. I You're like, there's a Q somewhere inside of me. <laughs> there's an inner Q. No, I was definitely the fat dude making a fucking, you know, smorgasbord on the, on the stove of like... <laughs> rice and eggs and everything i can get my hands on yeah yeah so yeah man my sister was into like all the good hip-hop stuff so like that was i mean that was it like before like i was in hip-hop and music like i just i don't know what yeah. the fuck i was doing so <laughs> you so you got the drums when you were 12 uh-huh right you're yeah. playing how long is it till you're playing in church dude it was like months after like really yeah, really quick literally really quick my my god sister came in the house and she was like she heard me playing. She was like, you need to come to church. And were you, uh, were you obsessed with them? Was it like, yeah. like, you know, that term shedding? Yes. I was shedding. Dude. You were shedding for I sure. I was shedding all the time. Yeah. Dude. I was definitely shedding. And like, I was definitely obsessed. Like I loved, you know, just getting home and playing to, you know, my favorite rap stuff and my mom's old records, you know, like I, I would play to my mom's old school stuff and, and, uh, she would come out and just start dancing like damn you're you're pretty good you yeah. know and i never see my mom dancing, like low, like, low key, if you if you two would have been around back then uh, you would have probably been a star and, you know maybe you, you, you remember, you've seen all those little three-year-olds exactly. fucking going viral with the drums and shit exactly the only yeah. thing is i'm like 12 yeah, and yeah. fat it's, but it still would have been i'm sure it was adorable still <laughs> yeah it was yeah. cool man so then uh how, how long did you get turntables um i was in high school so this is like a couple years ninth later grade. Yeah, yeah ninth grade i was djing heavy and i i used to dj all the house parties. Two techs or what? Uh, I had, no, I had, um, CDJs? I started with New Marks. Oh, okay. The yeah. Drive. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I never got techniques. Those were just like, you know, just a dream. But yeah. I, I, the best, the, what I got was like some statin straight arms. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I eventually got my statin joints and, um, yeah, man, I was making mixtapes and I had my own demo. And this is when um, MIDI disc, mini disc. Oh, yeah, mini disc. So, yeah. People were really into yeah, mini disc. Like, I, I had a lot of friends that invested <laughs> way heavy into those. Sweet. And I'm kind of like, I don't know if those are going to last. Oh, you saw it earlier. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I don't know if those are going to last. Like, you yeah. remember laser discs? Like, uh. <laughs> Definitely pointless as fuck. But I had mini disc popping and I used to just have mini disc mixtapes of all my mixes and, and all this stuff. And so. did this predate Serato? Like, you were using yeah. re- real records? Yeah. This is all when you had to get two of everything everything yeah. and you got the instrumental and you you know how the acapellas and yeah it was real records where were you going i was i was uh djing house parties like where were you going to get your records i was going to the spot in in, in um in in ventura where i was going to with salzers i would go to salzers pretty much to get all my and, and salzers still around everybody knows about salzers but it's the you know one of the last independent um music stores so um i would go to salzers or i would go to this spot called um uh, uh wild planet Mm-hmm. On, in downtown Ventura and they would have vinyl too mm-hmm. um, and, but there's other spots called Peacocks and, and different places I don't know if they're still around but that's where I would get all my vinyl mm-hmm. and uh, me and my boy Eddie we would um, we would DJ and I was DJ Styles and he was DJ Technique and we, we would DJ parties together. very DJ names very very, very super dude. DJ names <laughs> so you're playing like your high school parties and shit mm-hmm. did you oh. ever did you ever get into like driving up to Santa Barbara and playing DP shows or anything yo I don't think we ever went outside of like our little you know yeah. five mile radius we yeah. stayed like within you know the homies you know garage parties and our dream was that they would ask us one day to dj the school party you know the school function yeah but i think we were just too un- un- organized for that yeah you know but um i did a lot of djing though in high school that was my whole that was my thing i did the talent show and i was into dmc championships and you know so you had you had hand style like you you I were, did, you were yeah. full on turntable yeah i was definitely i could transform i could you what? know juggle the whole nine and you I know like Q-Bert, Q-Bert was like our god you know yeah. so yeah, that was it. That's funny because Loki, you look Filipino, kind of. <laughs> dude, I get that, dude. I always say that Qbert is like Filipino Michael Jordan. Yeah, straight well, up. Well, in, t- in 
until uh, it's like Pacquiao, until Pacquiao and came along. Yeah, it's yeah. Easy, you know, exactly. Pacquiao neck and neck. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's crazy. I didn't know that you had the squiggies. You know, I did. I, yeah, that's no, dope. Zoe tell you I get down, man. No shit. Well, that that, that makes sense. That's why your uh, your rhythm is impeccable. Yeah, man. You know, t- scratching is definitely you know percussion. It's hard too. Yeah, it's that's very hard. So yeah. hard. So when did you realize you could sing? You know, I did a little singing in high school. I did my own demo in high school, like around around the time like my parents got put in. I was, um, you know, everybody knew me for doing music, so I had I was making beats already by then, mm-hmm. and I had you know started rapping and and um and I made a demo and like around that time, that's when I started kind of delving into singing. But the what, thing, what age was that at? This is like seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. What were you What were you uh, making demos on? What were you making beats on? I was I had an Fruity NPC. No, oh, you had an NPC. NPC. Yeah, NPC, and I had a Triton keyboard, and um, that was it. And I would go. I didn't know how to set up MIDI on the fucking NPC to save my life. You so had your own Triton. I had my own Triton. Bro. Damn, your mom's was investing moms in you. Then went she, in. she 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 recognized the talent. I Absolutely, guess. dude. I had my whole a whole studio set up, bro. Yeah, back then Tritons were no joke. Nah, that was it. You could do everything on a Triton. Yeah. But I had a Triton and NPC and a mic and a little mixing board. Everything. My mom's, you know, they definitely were. One of my biggest supporters. I remember the first time I ever saw a Triton. I must have been. It was. I was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, back home. And, and uh, this guy was like showing me how his keyboard works, and, and it was a Triton. And he's explaining to me like, yeah, like you could do anything on this. Like he's taking a sound and like twisting it twisting yeah. knobs and it was a different sound all of a sudden and, you, and i'm like damn how much is one of those he's like well let's put it this way you could either buy this keyboard or buy a car and i said <laughs> damn that's a fucking that's some real shit 1200 so, yeah. dollars <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like, no for sure man it was you know my, my, my parents heavy invested yeah. and um <clears throat> yeah, I, I would. I had a whole studio set up, so I, that's what I was working on. And I would sample. I would sample everything too. I was heavy into sampling. So this is when you know Kanye was you know just a producer, and you know he was that was our hero. You know, so yeah, um, well, I was gonna say what was influencing you because you do have that kind of swingy, soulful sound. I would imagine you were like surfing OK Player back then. Dude, or something. I wasn't. Dude, really? I I was so mainstream. It was ridiculous. Really. Like, my main influences in well, like it, this is in high school, and all I was listening to was like Kanye West, Ludacris was huh. heavy, yeah. you know, um, Jay Z, Snoop, Tupac was everything. That's you know. funny. I, um, I would have guessed like D'Angelo yeah. and Slum Village yeah. and Badu and shit like exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. which was which was later. I mean, like I was in. T- I knew about D'Angelo and Badu. That was like you know, m- I was more so like a Badu fan. But I mean, this is I was probably like you know, 10, you know, when all this stuff was coming out yeah. and, you know, D'Angelo was dope. I knew he was dope, but when he came out with like voodoo, like that was almost scary to me. Like I wasn't, you know, anywhere record, ready for that, man, that in the 2000s. So good. Yeah. So good. I didn't really get hip to that and Dilla and all that good stuff till after high school, bro. Honestly, mm. like I had to go back and like, you know, listen to like really listen to voodoo and, yeah. and listen to all these, all these great classic albums because, um, I was just so engulfed with like, you know, Jay Z and like, you know, just the biggest rap Nelly and all these different yeah. things like that. That's really what I was my bread and butter. And um, you know, Kanye West, I was just a big fan of him, man. When when I was really got into producing and, and writing and stuff, that was, you know, mainly who I was listening to was yeah. cats like Kanye West and Timberland and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dope. So you're still chubby in high school? Yeah. I mean this I'm at my max. But when but when did you Oh that was that was at your max. <laughs> I was maxing out. But did you have game? Like were, were, I had were, hella game, were the bro. ladies still about it? I had hella game because I was funny. Yeah. And so the ladies were about it, but I was definitely in the friend zone. I was that, that funny dude that yeah. could, you know, make them laugh and I was popular as fuck, but what was I your, wasn't well, getting I'm any trying play. to get a mental picture of you because like now you got the rock star steez, you got the long hair, <laughs> but the lineup's clean. <laughs> Fuck it, this fool's in here in a leopard cut off denim vest and shit. Like I'm trying to picture you in the 2000s as a chubby dude. Like exactly. what, what was your what was your hair like, bro? I had the curly top. I had the I had the, the like, you like had the, some waves. The gel, you know, oh. I had the waves. Those were that was like in the um, I do the waves like you know maybe like it was in the summertime I do the waves. Yeah. But in like the my main my main like hair steez was was the curly kind of. Like, cause my shit, you know, I got the Korean, so I could yeah. throw a little gel in my yeah, shit yeah, and it yeah. would curl up uh-huh. and I would like fade the sides. And that uh-huh. was my shit, like the curly top. And then what were you rocking? Like FUBU jerseys? I was and rocking shit? FUBU, platinum yeah. FUBU to like, die. Lugs? No, I didn't have lugs. Air Forces were hella okay. popular. Okay. So I had the Air oh, yeah, Forces. Yeah, because of Nelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Air Forces were hella popping. You know, um, uh, uh, School of Hard Knocks. Uh huh. Uh, South Pole. Oh yeah, South you know Pole. what I'm saying. Um, big baggy jeans and shit. Big baggy yeah. jeans, yes, yeah. and and button up, fancy button up shirts. Because yeah. South Pole had the South Pole had all those joints. The School of Hard Knocks was popular. Yeah, so yeah. Anything with like 
a character on the pockets or some shit. Yeah. That's what the shit we was rocking. Right, right. Heavy FUBU for sure in rock aware. So how'd you do in high school? Did you, did you excel? I was, I excelled. I mean, I, and as far as social, like I was, you know, prom king and all this shit. Really? I got, yeah, I got, you know, winter formal king, I the, should say. The prom king, but in the friend zone. Yeah, so yeah, I wasn't getting any kind you, of play. You, 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 you danced with the prom queen, but you couldn't grab her to took us. Couldn't do a damn thing. Yeah. It was just all for, you know, you know, just, just, you know, what people were around, you know, it was all smiles, but it yeah. was no play. No. I shit. was, you know, pretty much a virgin all through high school. No shit. Yeah, I had a girlfriend, but it was just, you know, still no play. Yeah, everybody's getting played, but me. So no shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was interesting. But that's um, funny because I have I have this theory that I'm sure a lot of other people do too. But like I always think that quietly, it's like the chunky kids and the geeky kids are the ones that are like really getting it in <laughs> behind everyone else's back. Because it's like all the popular kids they attract all these people, but like you know the popular girls they think their pussy is like worth its weight in gold, and yeah. they're like not going to give that. Up, yeah. But it's like here you go. All the all the antisocial misfits are the ones that are like behind closed doors, just like yeah. really like. Oh yeah, I, I've already anal. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> like what? Hell no, nah, dude. I was watching hella porn. I wasn't getting any play. I was perverted as fuck, but I wasn't getting any play. And definitely the popular kids were fucking. Like I was because I was friends with all the most popular kids, all the Amber Crombie kids and shit, yeah, and yeah. they were fucking, and no I wasn't shit. doing shit. But making up stories. Did you go to college? <laughs> I went to uh, the 13th grade for a couple stints. The 13th grade. <laughs> Junior college. So some Juco? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, nah, nothing nothing that stuck, you know, just just a couple months here and there, yeah. but nothing that stuck. Well, yeah. so you get out of high school and mm-hmm. like all of a sudden your parents are gone. Gone. And you have to grow up real fast mm-hmm. on your own. You don't have anyone to like right. call and fucking ask advice for. Like that's the, th- man, that's the thing is like I really started to like uh, understand and respect my parents' role. Like once I was gone and everything that would come up in real life, I'd be like, wait, I need to call my mom and yeah. ask her a question. Man, like, such what, a blessing. Who, 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 who were you referring to? Who were your influences at that point? Like, well, who was helping you? Right. So, I mean, I got to really thank my sisters, man. I have all sisters. Yeah. And I had two older, I have two older sisters, Camille and Ronnie, and they, um, uh, my, my second oldest sister has, um, like four girls, you know? Mm-hmm. So they, they're older and they really, you know. So you're like the only boy I'm in a generation boy. of women. Yeah. Two I'm, generations of women. Yeah, straight up. I got a little sister, two older sisters. I got a bunch of, you know, I got, you know, steps All nieces. God, sister, all nieces, a bunch of just women. So um, my sisters held it down, man. They they kept me, you know, they protected me from a lot of bullshit that I could have gotten into. Because mm-hmm. right when my parents got locked up, they all moved in and, and um, you know, took me and my little sister and, you know, took the place of my parents pretty mm-hmm. much. And um, I lived with them up until I was 18 and then um and then moved out and so i was you where'd know, you go i moved with my buddy my my my, my boy um benji he, he uh graduated with me uh-huh. and he had a place in oi oh yeah so i moved there and um it was in the middle of nowhere and at this point like i had a lot of steam coming out of um high school with beats and stuff so i was like i was doing a lot of stuff like i was i was meeting up with just blaze and brian michael cox and having all really? these meetings yeah no shit yeah i was the, i was heavy because i was i had gotten pretty good at sampling at this point and mm-hmm. i was making beats and my um and so got, you had gems and people were hearing them. yeah people were hearing them and i was you know getting a link with different people but how are you promoting your stuff that these guys were hearing of you? well i had a I, my sister's friend was um a business accountant for a lot of different musicians so she took on the management role mm-hmm. early on when, when and this is right when my parents got put in so i got to tribute you know a lot of respect for her because she took me under her mm-hmm. um under her wing too and, and and protect me from a lot of stuff too and she was like you're dope you know i have my demo too that i had did so she she was she took me around and she would play for her clients. She had a lot of, of writers and stuff mm-hmm. that that were in in the biz. Mm-hmm. And um, we hooked up with this one writer named Dave Young, and he he started playing my my beat tapes a, a lot. And mm-hmm. we had these meetings, and um, I was going around. I, I had gotten meetings with different people. We went to Atlanta and this and, and this and that. But eventually, I got real jaded because um, things were happening fast enough. And what was happening was I wasn't I didn't have my own style really. I was mm-hmm. really good at mimicking you know, different people that I was into. Mm-hmm. But um, what happened was people saw that and they saw that I had potential, but what they were, what I was getting put in the box was, can you make someone a beat like this or make a beat like Lil John? Lil John was everything at that point. Dude, everyone sounded like Lil John. Everything at that Fuck. point. So they wanted me to make, you know, crunk joints or yeah. make more joints like Kanye. And, and I got real jaded and I was going through a lot of stuff, just, you know, a lot of stress at home. You know, I, I, I was watching my sister struggle to, to take care of us and I, I wasn't working. So I've always felt like 
I got to blow up or do something, you know, or uh. because I can't, you know, my, my sisters can't afford this. So once they were telling me to do this like that, I, I wasn't feeling that. So I ended up just quitting like music, you know? Really? Yeah. And so, At what age was this? Like 19, this 20? 18. 18. Yeah, around 18 or 19 yeah. years old. So I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to get a job and be a square. And what'd you do? So I did assistant living. Uh -huh. So I got it. My, my brother-in-law got me a job. Helping out old folks? Helping out old folks. So yeah. I changed diapers and I did that for like two years straight. Yeah, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I did it in Ohio. And that's where the song, uh, You Don't Have to Wear No Drawers Around Me, <laughs> came from. <laughs> Damn, you feel like <laughs> I love that song. Well, that's the where the song Drugs came uh, from. Yeah, <laughs> prescriptions and oh, shit. shit. Nah, nah, exactly, man. So, like, yeah, so you're working at an assistant living home and, yeah. and living in Ohio. Yeah. And, and, and you were DJ Styles to that point still? Hell nah. Hell nah. I when? sold my turntables. I sold my NPC, like everything, you know? But I mean, that was the name that you were still going by no, when you quit? No, or, I was... Um, when did, where? I've been breezy since I was about 12. Where, yes. where does that come from? So, I mean, it's... um. Shit, should I tell this shit? I mean, honestly, my brother-in-law gave me that name, and um, it was honestly because like I was always like busting ass. Like honestly. I was just gonna say, I was gonna make a joke. It's because you were always farting. Yeah, and I didn't think that that's where you were actually I, I gonna used, go with it. I used to tell people that it was because I'm Aquarius and I'm an air sign and all this shit. <laughs> like, so I got a lot. Of that air. was the story I used to go with. But honestly, my brother-in-law Willie gave me that name because I was this fat kid that used to just eat hot Cheetos and fart. Like <laughs> that was my shit. You know? <laughs> I was just that kid. Oh no shit. So, and where did Lovejoy come from? Well, Lovejoy happened when I started writing music and I had a, I put out my demo and I was like, I'm going to be breezy Lovejoy. I just thought that sounded cool. Because it always made me think of Reverend Lovejoy from The yeah, Simpsons. Yeah, it had nothing to do yeah. with it. I just was like trying to figure out, you know, anything that sounded cool. And yeah, was yeah. Just, that's all it came yeah. to. And I was, you know, you know, I was I always been, you know, even at a young age, just in, into like, appeasing and, and and you know having a positive outlook so i think that had to do with it yeah yeah, yeah I was, you, you're you're a big smiley dude you yeah got, you got a big smile that's it that's it so, so it's very lovejoy like it fit the, yeah. the name fit yeah so okay so what year did you graduate i graduated in 04 in 04 uh -huh. okay so by the time i had heard about you it was probably about oh seven or oh eight oh, it wow. was it was right when uh, I found I heard about you through Verbs right when um, Bananas started, mm -hmm. and he had you on, and he's like, "Yo, you gotta fucking come through and see this dude Breezy." And I was like, "All right, cool. yeah." So what happens between the time you quit and the yeah. time when you like come back out the gate swinging with yeah. like, like I said, with you ain't gotta wear no drawers and all that Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Um. So pretty much, I'm working at the assistant living. I'm still the only thing that only part of music that I'm still doing is like playing drums, and I'm still playing at the church at mm -hmm. this point. So. I'm um, playing at the church and um, this chick that grows up in the church, she leaves. She's older than me. She's four years older. Mm -hmm. um, she goes to college, comes back. And at this point, I'm like metamorphosized. So the only th I'm working and I'm working out, you know, yeah. so I stopped eating like a fucking pig and I, and I lost a bunch of weight. Uh -huh. So that was the only thing. So she comes back. She's like, oh, damn, who's this kid? And, yeah. you know, this that's, you know. I got two nicknames, Breezy you, and like, Bubba. Like 70 pounds or something? Yeah, I had lost probably by them, like, yeah, close to like 70 yeah. pounds or some shit. No shit. Yeah. So um, she comes back and she's feeling it. So yeah. that becomes, and, and I had no play in high school, you know, and yeah. no real play up until then. And that becomes my- Finally, finally lost your virginity at the assistant living home. Pretty much, dog, <laughs> like on my lunch break, you know, no, but like straight up, bro. You know, like this is, I'm like 19. Yeah. And she comes back into play and, 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 and that's everything. So she's like, that's my boo. And I get married. At uh, 21. So you were married and divorced already? Yeah. No bro. shit. Actually, yeah. I think I knew that, but I forgot. That's crazy. Yeah. You, yeah. You've had, you got a lot of stories. It's a young love joy. So, I mean, so you meet her and that's like what? You're, that's like the first time you get laid and you're like, I'm wiping, every, the, I'm wiping this shit up. That's the first consistent pussy that I get. Yeah. And, yeah. and not like awkward. You know, yeah. that's she just like is everything. And she, and I'm really like, my parents are in, like, I'm, I want, like, you, you I want something. stability. You, yeah. need a, you need a family. Yeah. So yeah. To, for me to have, I had a car, for me to have a job and have my own spot, I was, you know, have my roommate, my, my boy. Yeah. I wasn't, in, I wasn't doing me music. I was just playing drums and I meet her back. We get back in the, you know, in the groove and then, you know, she becomes my girl and we date. And then, um, how long till you get married? So, um, I meet her like around like 20 and then we get married like pretty much a year later. No like shit. At a, like at a, at a, at a, um, courthouse. No shit. Yeah. And, 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 and just by, just like by choice, not like, oh, it's a shotgun wedding. She's pregnant or not. Well, no, no. What happened was we we're just really horny and we fucking, she, we were both like into the church at oh, this yeah. point and we would, f you know, fuck. And yeah. then we feel all guilty afterwards. Like, yeah. Going to hell, you know? yeah so, re religion does that. Exactly. So yeah. we're like, no, 
let's just get married so we can fuck all the time <laughs> and we don't got to feel guilty. <laughs> that way we don't, yeah, have to we'll, pr- we don't have to pray we'll afterwards. We'll figure the rest out later. So that was that. I think that's what I think. You wow. Know? Um, so we did that and we got married shotgun and then immediately it's like, I'm like, what the fuck did I do? You she know? she moved in and shit? So we, I get the ring and everything, yeah. and she's like, I want you to propose at the church, and I want it to be this big old thing, and I just start getting nervous. Yeah. We get an apartment, in because she gets, she's going to UCLA, yeah. and now at this point, I just started getting back into music, and mm-hmm. it's because um, I I just started get, doing my own thing at this point. I mm-hmm. stopped, and then I, I get back into music, and all this time, I'm living with my, my roommate, and he's all into punk rock and rock and roll and all this different things. So yeah. he's in, he's bringing all these different bands to play. I'm going to punk rock shows with him. I'm listening to these different bands, and I'm, I'm my mind is like, I don't want to hear anything hip-hop. I want to be, like, eclectic, and I yeah. want to listen to everything. So I'm listening to, like, Cole, Coldplay just came out. Yeah. They were a big influence. I, uh, like, that was everything for me. And so... I just I just started trying to listen to different things and so once I'm influenced I want to get back into music and and my my ex at the time she she was a singer so she you know I started writing songs again and, and writing these quirky kind of alternative songs and she she's like dude you should sing you got a good voice and I'm like yeah. oh for real all right cool you know so I started getting a little confidence and then that's when I started singing uh-huh. and, and writing more singing songs um and um you know I had I would do stuff with her and she was in the band and everything like that. So she got into UCLA. Initially, I went to I applied for um, Arts Institute to uh-huh. be a chef. Oh, right, right. I quit that shit after one quarter and then I applied to MI Musicians Institute uh-huh. and I got in there and then I was like, cool. So we were both we both were going to school in L.A. and we got an apartment. But living in Ohio. Yeah, we're living. We're both living. I'm living in Ohio. She's living in at our folk spot. You know, we're still in Ventura County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're commuting. That's a long drive. We're commuting. Yeah, exactly. Carpooling, doing the thing. And this is when we're get to we're getting to know each other at yeah. this point because now you got a two hour drive exactly. with traffic every morning exactly and you got a lot to talk about yeah a lot to talk about and I'm getting more into music and more out of her you know yeah so but it's like you know I've been you know up until this point I've I've definitely been the type to to let things get out of hand before it gets just fucking crazy and I'm just like peace you know yeah. I've, I've done uh, that's definitely a pattern so that was early stages of it and um and so you know long story short like we get an apartment but we never move in uh-huh. and, and we i we got married but we never told anybody and my mom's in prison you know and i yeah. i didn't tell her and, and none of, nothing and then you know shit hits the fan and i'm like i just i don't want a divorce or annulment because it you was said only you, in a few months oh, okay so you got to have it annulled yeah oh that's good and um you know, it was it was pretty crazy, man. Like, I, it gets crazier, but I won't. I don't want to put her on blast like this. But yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, it's it, that whole thing is done. But now I have this apartment, and I'm in school, and I'm broke, mm-hmm. and so I do have the the ring that I was supposed to propose to her. Yeah. So I sell that, yeah. and that pays for my apartment, and then I get a roommate, and I, I'm going to MI. So I went to MI for her drums, though. Yeah. So that's where I'm at, and I'm flourishing. So uh-huh. that's when I started. Um, I have my own band and I'm in LA and now that's when I'm being introduced to things like bananas and like that's bananas was the first place I went to. Yeah. Um, cause I was living in Inglewood and that was the first pl- like place that pretty much got, I feel like got me into the scene of meeting different musicians. Yeah. Verbs. I always try to shout verbs out as much as I can. Cause verbs is like super connector. He's like, a conductor straight he, up. Yeah, yeah. He knows everybody and mm-hmm. he also understands people's tastes and yeah. he, and he was like literally, you know, the guy that told me like, you got to hear this dude, you'll mm-hmm. really like it. And then I heard it and I was like, really liked it. And then yeah. that's what got me to bring you into the Knox city shit. And that's what yeah. eventually I think got everything tied in with Jonathan. It was, it's all because of verbs really yeah, absolutely. If you go way back to the end absolutely. or way to the back to the beginning. So oh, absolutely. He was definitely the main folk and verbs was that dude. Like, I still see him as like a LA staple, but when I came to LA and I was started, I didn't know very much about the scene. I had my band, but I was very much in in the musicians institute bubble. Yeah, and so, you were like being session musician and shit. Yeah, like that, I was or? doing session stuff, yeah. but I had I had Breezy Love Joy yeah. band, yeah, so yeah. we were big in in that school, you know. Right. And then when we started branching off and doing shows, we started doing stuff, you know, around town and stuff. And then we eventually got to Lamert. Yeah, and um, uh. And and Verbs was the dude, and when I got to Lemur, I saw um, Verbs and Alpha and all these different rappers. Sat everybody. I yeah. didn't I didn't know about Project Bloat or anything like yeah. that. 
I think that had kind of, you know, there was kind of like the tail end of that. And, yeah. and more so it was just like the younger generation I was there. That's exactly. That's a, that's what bananas is. The, yeah. young, the youngest generation, the last generation of mm. the blood pretty much. Right, right. Yeah. But they were just still nothing like I had ever seen. Like, yeah. And it's uh, and it, it took a little more of a left field turn than the yeah. blood did. Like verbs made it very eclectic and mm-hmm. kind of, um, it, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot more white people at bananas than there were at the blood. You Absolutely, know? Yeah. man. Absolutely. There was also many alternative things and just people. I never seen people people like like this at, yeah. you know it was just crazy so yeah i loved it and um you know i i just the before i wanted anything like i just wanted that respect from those you know from them yeah. you know and so they were the first people to like yo come you're dope you know yeah. and i and i i didn't know about there was a beat scene and i, mm-hmm. I remember seeing duke west like before I, he, when he was just maestro and like yeah maestro. before i even thought he was like you know working with him was like a dream you know i didn't know and i also remember um, when we were doing shows, we would do like college shows. I actually saw you in um and verbs when you guys had just did your oh, collab yeah, project yeah. with Mers. Oh and, yeah, yeah, it that was Pomona? a show with you and I. It was like you and I, Mers, and us, and we were like the first band up. Oh yeah, that was at Pomona, mm-hmm. I think, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like. I was like, dude, these dudes are killing. Oh, like, that show was tight because that was the most, I, to that point, that was the most I had ever gotten paid for a show. See? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, me, uh, like I had some, like, uh, I had this girl kind of managing me who mm-hmm. knew, who knew like about college gigs and yeah. how much you could ask for. And yeah. I think, um, she got me and Kyle like 800 bucks for that show. See? So we each got to 400 bucks in our pocket. We were like, holy shit. Falling out, bro. I said, mama, we made it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> God. <laughs> Exactly four hundred cuts each. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I've oh. never seen some fucking show money like this straight before. Up, yeah, straight that up. was a fun ass show. I remember that. Yeah, no, that was dope, man. Yeah. So yeah, like you know, those. This is around the time I started writing those songs, like no draws and stuff yeah. like that. So that just, was. I mean, I keep bringing it up, but that was the one that got me. Like I saw you perform that live, and like you're drumming and mm-hmm. fucking huge smile on your face, yeah. and going, you don't have to wear no draws. <laughs> I don't know how the melody goes anymore. Yeah, it was so that long was ago, it. but like fucking and like I swear, girls were just melting over that shit Man. i was like damn that's a ballsy thing to say like just go ahead take your underwear off right right uh, but it sounded it doesn't sound it sounds so classy <laughs> when you sing it you're like crooning it yeah man that was it dude we did a lot of shows at temple bar well it used to be temple bar i think it's the virgil now so i did a lot of shows there playing with different bands and in 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 the soul kind of like gambit so like yeah there was a lot of influence with that and like you know i think that was a big part of it you know with the with the ladies and stuff like that when did you meet your current wife i met her at mi at MI. My baby, so my what, what, what was she doing there? She was singing and um, playing piano. No shit. Yeah, she came from Korea. Yeah. And um, like, I was just already turned out, like, at that point. Like, you said, oh, you Korean? I'm a quarter Korean. Korean, not do, mama. You uh, know? Yeah. yeah. So she, I mean, I didn't know shit about Korean culture or anything. Yeah, but, but even still, like, that's the thing is that I'm a quarter Italian, but anytime I meet an Italian girl, I'll be like, oh, yeah, girl, I'm Italian. Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll, I'll throw that out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all I knew was that she was fine as fucking. Like yeah. that's what I, you know, I wanted that. And like, every, this shit's corny, but like everybody's like, you know, I just knew right away. But definitely, I definitely remember like when I when I met her and shit. I was like, oh shit, yeah. I want I gotta have that shit. So yeah, you said, how do you feel about marriage? Yeah, straight up, <laughs> dude. You know, I don't, I don't think too much about that. Like, I don't think too long. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm it's a do- an I'm a, I'm a doer, not a sayer. Yeah, dude. You know, so you guys, pad, so you guys start going out, and then uh, how long till that's a serious thing? I mean, we did pretty it. Quick. We did it for you know. The, I was working. I pretty much I had to drop out of school, but they hired me to be a TA. Mm-hmm. So I would play drums for vocal classes and stuff, mm. and that's how I met her because I would play drums and I was playing in a gospel vocal class. Yeah, and she came in and it was like, and all of a sudden playing. you're pl- you're like playing a little harder and spinning. Your sticks just around and shit. It. Like, Took my shirt off and yeah, everything. Like, yeah, what's pop? Yeah, nah, like, nah, nah, nah. But yeah, there's just no, you know, you ain't got to say shit. You know, if you're doing your thing, you, you know, say you ain't got to say shit, and you don't got to wear no drawers. Around <laughs> exactly, you. dude. And I was, you know, we were, we were everything at the school at that point. Yeah. I had no drawers. Yeah, had our, you know, we were the band at the school, so right. it was like, you know, it was cool. So I, I got to like, you know play in front of her and mm-hmm. you know kind of she wasn't feeling it i had to pretty much you know really chase her down and you know i had a rep as you know just a player you know at yeah, the school so yeah. it was cool you know we dated and um you had to be like oh have you ever heard of dumbfounded yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was later it was before, but, it was before yeah, that yeah. But, I, no, but you know that's my plug with korean chicks i'm like oh have you ever heard of dumbfounded that's my homie that definitely <laughs> works yeah exactly <laughs> shout out to young yeah. parker yeah <laughs> um so how long until like you guys find out that she's pregnant Dude, it's like, it's like probably like two years. Oh, so you guys have been dating for a while. Yeah, we date all the while I'm in school and then she has to move. 
she moves back to Korea and comes back. Oh, okay. So, and when she comes back... Did you go visit her at all? No, I didn't visit. Yeah. No, we just we just kept up on email. Yeah. And then she actually came back. And then when she comes back, she she moves back in with me. And uh-huh. at this point, I'm living with a bunch... I'm living in Inglewood. This is when I just started going to Bananas and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, this is... um I'm living in Inglewood and uh, I'm, I'm living with a bunch of producers. And we have this thing called Block Cheddar. And um, this is this was like the first team I had, and I met all of them at MI. And uh-huh. she comes in and pretty much moves in with me. And my I'm sharing a room with another producer, but we're all just in this one room. Yeah. So she just riding it out, and um, and then you know she gets pregnant shortly after that. Yeah. And so. And what what's your initial thought? My initial, I mean, she I was in rehearsal, and she calls me crying, and I was like, "What happened?" And, and then she's like, "I'm pregnant," and I was just like, "All right, tight, let's get it." Yeah. Yeah, I remember just like we're gonna work it out you know yeah. like i remember just thinking i didn't it was just like i didn't have anxiety or anything it was just like you know i took a breath and it was just like all right let's yeah go. it's it's funny a lot of my friends that have kids or have had kids like it's funny how some people react like some people like me if i heard that uh, a girl was pregnant i would be like oh fuck my yeah. life's over yeah and some people go oh and like their hustle mode clicks on yeah and like dude some of my friends that had kids young like their hustle mode clicked on hard and they're doing so good now Absolutely. and it's like they're like if i would have never had this kid i wouldn't be where i am straight up yeah. i can attest to that also too it's the baby mama like that's why people lose their shit it's because yeah. you fucking like some ratchet bitch it that depends you, on the girl yeah you know like it's like i was i definitely was confident that I had found a, a, a good, you know, counterpart and uh, she was going to be a really good mother, you know, like yeah. she was always just, you know, just the best, you know, yeah. so like um, that's why I was at ease, you know, mainly I was just the only part was that I knew like I had to, you know, I was struggling to just make, you know, I only had to pay probably like 200 bucks for rent mm-hmm. at that point because it was like 15 of us in the house mm-hmm. and I was struggling to do that. Oh, really? So... When when I knew I was gonna have a kid, I was just like, "What the fuck am I gonna do?" You yeah. know, I have to like, um, and it's always been a thing. It's like when you when you decide to do music or whatever you do, you know, full on, and you take that gamble. There's a part where if that's gonna be your livelihood, you have to take on also being a businessman, you know. And you there's different sacrifices that you might have to do in order. Oh, to- dude! In this day and age, I you know you have to be a businessman. Yeah. You have to be the, you have to marketing, be the creative. Everything. You have to be the marketing director. You have to be the graphic designer. You everything. have to be the mixing engineer. You you know you gotta learn to do everything. Straight up, dude! Yeah. You gotta have so many hustles. So it's mm-hmm. like I didn't. And and this is the thing with me is like I like I remember when there was. Like I'm, a, I'm, I say my generation is like the cable MTV generation, like cable. Now when people are like the internet, whatever. But like I remember when the internet was like very slow and it wasn't like you have internet, you know? Yeah, it was like, that new shit. It was like new, you know. It was I like, always ask everyone who brings up the early days of the internet, who was the first woman you searched for on the internet? Exactly, the first woman. I mean, the first thing to see naked yeah exactly Who? probably like jennifer love hewitt or some shit oh that's a good choice yeah. I, I, mine was jenny mccarthy but yeah. i'm a big fan of jennifer love hewitt jennifer love shout Huge out tits. to j-lo hewitt yep yeah yeah oh man yep. I lo- love that woman shout out to bang bus that was very <laughs> that was heavy on rotation too <laughs> so anyway yeah so so uh what were you saying about the oh what i was saying cable is generation that, is that nowadays it's like you have to be everything you know you gotta yeah. you know you gotta be all that different thing and i feel like the the kids are under us that really have naturally have that and yeah. my my whole thing is like and with my generation i feel like there was some artists that got had to learn that have to yeah. develop that learning curve and they're doing well with it and yeah. some of them that just rejected it and right. then either i don't know what you know like they, they reject it and they they might still make be able to make a living but they just do other shit right you know? right because um, not everybody is equipped to be all of those things. So right. people are just artists, you know, and they don't, they don't know how to like, you know, market themselves or do, you know, stay up on Twitter and be these personalities that, you know, you might right, feel right. like you have to be. So no, totally. I've seen a lot of dope artists just fall by the wayside because they don't have that ability, you know, right, right. or they can't find the people to connect with to help them with that. Yeah, I, definitely. Like, uh, the people that we grew up loving and listening to, like, I, I often wonder like, okay, you know, people always say, oh, if Biggie was alive, he'd still be the greatest rapper and this and that. And I, I kind of think like, I wonder if he would be good at Twitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, you know, he had this person. Persona, but like, dog, now you gotta, you have to like be this 
giant personality. You yeah, know what I mean? And absolutely. Like every every fucking tweet you put out or every Facebook post, it's all a representative of yes, you. Yes. And now one tweet can ruin a career. Exactly. One meme, one tweet, one like anything. You know what I'm saying? Like so transparent. So it's like, like back then there was so much mystery. Yeah. Like you know? John Mayer fucking makes one racist comment in an interview, and all of a sudden, like he's he's still not really recovered that's, from that's that shit. That's what you're known for. You know what I'm saying? Know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is before Google. This is like you know all the shit. So you know this is when it was like you sell a bunch of CDs, like when you can sell millions of CDs or you get a record contract. Like yeah, that was yeah. it. You know, being yeah, on radio, yeah. Yeah. there was no um, you know other side of the matrix. Yeah. That was it. So I still remember that. And like, there's a part of me that's still very much like you know in in like that has that ideology. I think you know that. Uh-huh. that and I had to, you know, it wasn't until you know I got around cats like you and, and, and dumbfounded and, and these different cats that were getting it their own way and learning in my age and learning how to develop in yeah. this age that I seen like I had to transition yeah. you know um, because I just thought the talent was going to just take me there. No, totally. And when yeah. I when I first started being around you, I could tell that's what you thought. And you kind of had that mentality of like, I'm going to get a deal yeah. and I'm going to be on. Yeah. And I think that was it was good to be around someone like Jonathan, where it's like you have to see somebody be uh every single part of the repertoire you know what i mean it's like okay the videos are there the tweets are there the you know the fan interaction is there you know what i mean like that's that shit's important Mm -hmm. and and i'm sure you you know over the last few years you've probably been getting much better at all of that yeah definitely just one thing is like i just realized like it might not be twitter it might not be youtube but whatever you know how to do that's natural yeah you have to market the shit out of that yeah, and, for and sure. Well, by 10. And that's the thing is that you are so naturally gifted at music that mm-hmm. that shit is the cream always rises to the yeah, top is yeah. how I feel. And I feel like you are such a uh, gifted singer and gifted rapper musician that like that's going to shine through and, yeah. and you're not going to have to be as Internet savvy as some people are right. because eventually it's going to like just break, you know. Right. Right. Um, so you got that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah. Yeah. So. So um, what's up now? What are you working on? I, I, yeah. S- we'll fast forward through Sorry. all the knock steady stuff because yeah. like I think people who follow this they kind of know like yeah we got involved in knock city shit and then yeah. it ended really bad for me and i don't really know what happened in those years but i don't want to dig into it because cool. i start i start being on some like man fuck that fuck this <laughs> so but i know that recently you signed with one of my good buddies james yes, to hellfire club yeah so, man shouts out to james yeah, no, no can, can do i just talked to him when we took a break uh to tell him to clear out this hard drive on the computer and he said to say hola to you oh man so anyhow t- how, how did that happen well um how did that happen um I got to shout out, um, you know, Dumbfounded. I think Parker really, you know, set that relationship up. I ran into James a few times and like, I'm trying to think when did we even like really link? Because like I had like, I just always heard of, you know, Hellfire Club and, and more so I heard of like Low End Theory. Mm-hmm. And um, it was like almost mythical. Like, mm-hmm. dude, this is some crazy night. I had the first time I ever went was the first time I was performing there. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, you know what is this? You know, I just heard so much, the reputation of it was so heavy. And so I just always, you know, was like, I wish I can, you know, be a part of that somehow, you know? So, um, I was just grinding it out with, with John and, you know, and, and we were doing our thing and the the whole time I was making music and stuff like that. And, um, I think no can like, he came across once I had certain, you know, certain amount of material, I think it caught his attention finally, like really caught his attention. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I remember him just hitting me up for a thing that he did called Daylight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was the first time we really got to link up. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think, I don't know if it was before that or after this show, but we linked up and, like, I found out, you know, he was, you know, we had a lot in common. You know, he was married, he had kids, and, mm-hmm. you know, he was just like, yo, just just send me, you know, let me hear some music, you know. And um, I was, at, at this point, I mean, I have, like, you know, five albums of, like, unreleased stuff right now because mm-hmm. i had just been recording 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 and building just all this music so by the time i got to know can i was i gave him a zip of all my music and he was like dude this is, you know you're crazy this and that and um he was like what do you think you know no pressure or nothing but while before you know before he was like i think you're gonna be huge this and that but while you're you know doing your thing why don't you you know do a project with us you know like it can't hurt you know and um you know, we'll push it as much as we can. And we just want to help, you know, you know, spread, you know, spread the name around. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I just always fuck with the vibe. And, and I started seeing, you know, more that, you know, what, how they were young. But I feel like um, Hellfire Club and all of, you know, the artists, you know, 
with this year and, and the following the future years are going to be really big. I yeah. feel like, you know, they're picking up a it's lot a very, of stuff. It's a very good blend of talent that, yeah. uh, that's, that's going on with that right now. And, and they're all, um, they're all distinctly different, but have a similar vibe mm-hmm. uh, that fits together. Like, you know, so I, yeah. yeah, I got true all... to the art and it's yeah. like, you know, and, and no can his vision is very cool because he knew that he, he likes to get different things, you know? Mm-hmm. So the fact that he reached out to me, I was like, all right, dope. You know, cool. I, I liked everybody on the label. So I was like, cool. And, um, you know, we put our heads together and, and we, you know, we thought the best thing to, to do was to do a mixtape, but do it our own way. So that's when we, when I, you know, I thought of cover art and he was like, yeah, I think yeah. that'll work, you know. Who did the video with the wolfing and shit? That was the homie Mike Dempsey. That's so good. Man, How much you. did that cost? Thank you. 2K. Really? That's yeah, it? That's it, man. They murdered that. They stretched the shit out of that, that looks man. so good. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah no they, they had an incredible eye and, you know, he just like... The thing, I think the reason why it came out good is because the cats are passionate about the song and the music. You know, yeah. he's one of those, he's, you know, just a huge fan. Yeah, and, uh, it looked really good. Yeah, he was a huge fan of the song, so he really killed that. And, um, yeah, man, that's honestly like the, I had put out, I put two projects out before that, but the cover art thing, and I think it's because I learned that you, there's it's a lot to do with the story about how you put out stuff and how the posture of things, but it it having the, the hellfire machine behind it and the story and everything like that and the way it was done like it ended up getting like the most press that of the any album you know and i think that um projects that are full of covers are a good way to introduce somebody because yeah. it's easy to palette it's like oh this is his take on this song that yeah. i'm very familiar with so it's like it makes it easier to understand who that artist is exactly. as a person you know what i mean because yeah. like this is something familiar to me put in his context and now i get him as an artist yeah man yeah so are you working now on new stuff absolutely and, and then that's scheduled like i don't yeah. i'm not trying to make you schedule any dates okay. or anything but like yeah. you how far along are you well I'm, i have a lot of stuff that's like pretty much done a lot of stuff is like 80 90 done mm-hmm. um the next the the thing there's a few things i have this this um my project is going to be called malibu mm-hmm. and um right i don't have a date i've been i've been saying promoting that it, it might come out in the summer springish summer yeah um so i would like it for it to come out in the summer but there's some things that just came into play that i might take my time now on it because yeah. um you know i have the luxury too now so but i i have a project with knowledge that's that's pretty much from done. philadelphia from new jersey i think new but jersey? i think he did live in philly too yeah i've heard that guy's beats he's dope yeah knowledge he is, is really dope, dope. Yeah. yeah um i'm really excited about that um and um i have a bunch of songs with low def um and i have you know just like 40 tunes of my, my own you know own stuff so i and i, I produce you know George Waski's new project and I have a collab project that I did with Dumbfounding and Wax. So all something will come out this year. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. um but I just kinda been less concerned about the dates and just more so about working and getting it done and then now the next step is yeah, make sure the posture is right on everything. So yeah. um That's the great. next thing that come out will be dope. But right now I'm just, you know, I just want to work and, and keep making new stuff. I feel like I'm chasing, you know, a lot of good songs right now. Yeah, so I just want to sure. stay productive and That's studio. good. What uh where can the people find you online? So, um, I got AndersonPack.com now. Uh Uh-huh. And honestly, like... Anderson spelled how it is, and then Pack is P-A-A-K. Yes. Dot com. Uh Uh-huh. Dot com, and you can go on there. Um, I got the sound loud. Everything is Anderson Pack. I think... Is the Twitter mo- Anderson Pack now? Twitter too? is is um Twitter handle. I got two. I got Anderson Pack and I got the Breezy Lovejoy. Are they? Did you did you get both of them verified? No, not uh, yet. I'm trying to double up though. If I'm I can still get... not verified. I'm so sad. About yeah, it. no, Shit, I'm I'll not try, verified. I try to pull some strings. Fuck man. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, don't I don't know. I just gotta fucking. That shit's crazy. I'm yeah, like, I, man. Breezy Lovejoy anyway. is verified, so that's why I haven't. I'm trying to get that check on the other one, so then you know maybe I can get rid of one. But yeah. I don't know. I'm not the best at Twitter. I think the my where I excel is Instagram. Like I can do the videos and like I just I like Instagram. Like as far as how you can see, stay up and what and see where my personality is like, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it definitely. I think it shines on Instagram. So for sure, man. Well, I fucking appreciate you coming in. What are you going to perform today? I'm going to do this joint. Uh, it's called Suede, produced by Knowledge. And uh, yeah. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, Suede. Is it some new new? It's is, some new new. Is new. it out? No, it's not out. Oh shit! You guys are getting blessed with a premiere on Kind of Neat, which yeah. is always my favorite. So That's we, great. Yeah, we got to drive traffic here. There's only where you can get it. For sure, man. Thank <laughs> you. Um, you know, my name is Lee, and some of you guys might know me as Intuition. Follow me on Twitter at It's Intuition. Follow my man behind the boards, Ben Shin, making the shit 
at sound buttery at I am database. I haven't done this in a month, so I'm like very rusty at saying my uh, social media shit. You can follow us as a unit at kind of neat, facebook.com slash kind of neat, youtube.com slash that's kind of neat, where you're going to see my man Anderson Pack perform suede produced by knowledge, and that is going to be a banger, I'm sure. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, broke 11K in our month off, which is very nice. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so yeah, subscribe, rate, comment, all that. Download that podcast app. <laughs> subscribe to kind of neat fucking like that shit five stars comment on it tell anderson pack what a sexy voice he has in those comments do yeah. that because the more five stars that we get the closer we are to getting on the front page of itunes which is very important to us so